Hey everyone, this is Chris from Moore's Jewelers, and we often get asked why we don't include all the finger size options with our 3D models, and it's really two parts. The first part is the reality of the file itself, and most places just have a file size limit. While it might make for a more enticing product page, no one really wants to be downloading unnecessary gigabytes worth of files. This might work for more straightforward designs, but once you get into something with lots of settings or complex designs, the file sizes really add up quickly. And the second part is, it's not really needed. If a model is made correctly, it can quickly be resized digitally or even after printing, which is what I was going to show off today, about how to resize just about any ring before printing. Over here, we all thought this was pretty common knowledge, but that might just be because we're engaging with various models and softwares on a daily basis. Alright, so here we have one of our cocktail ring 3D models. Typically, when you download a model, you'll be provided an STL or an OBJ file for printing, which causes the mesh to look something like this. If the file mesh is dense enough, you might not need to remesh the model, but most models are decimated to their smallest file size to save space. If this is the case, remeshing will unify the mesh and make resizing easier. For this whole process, different programs can be used as the steps are relatively the same, but we found that Blender works the best due to its transparency mode, but each program has their pros and cons. For now, we'll be showing it off in Blender, but ZBrush is probably the other program most will be using, Rhino, or its plugin matrix, has a built-in one-button option to resize rings, but from our testing, this is overall more of a scaling option, and if you need the settings or details to remain the same, it falls behind. It also used to not work well for STL or OBJ files, but that might have changed recently. We moved away from using matrix years ago, once better options became available. Once you have your model open in Blender, if you need to remesh the piece, it's as easy as going into sculpt mode, and then pressing R to adjust the scale of the mesh. A few tips, if you use a higher poly count, this will keep the model looking the same. If you use too low of a poly count, it'll begin to distort the ring. Here's an example of that. You can see how the lower poly count isn't usable, but remeshing to a higher poly count, while this may take a few seconds to process, keeps the bottle looking exactly the same. Then when you've got the poly count selected, hitting Ctrl or Command R will then remesh the model. Once that's done, you can go back into edit mode and check how everything turned out. You can now see how the mesh is uniform, although it's pretty dense. The first few times doing this process, it can seem like it adds a bit of extra time, but once it becomes second nature, it really only takes about a minute or two to get the whole ring ready for resizing. Which brings us to the next steps. I put in three different finger sizes, a size 6, a size 8, and a size 10. All the example rings I have here are already set to a size 8, as this gives the best options for quickly adjusting to the widest range of finger sizes. So starting with the cocktail ring here, let's say we want to take it to a size 8 to a size 6. First you bring up the finger size, drag the base of the ring to the top of the guide, then jump back into sculpt mode. With the elastic brush selected and symmetry turned on, you can now go around and push and pull the model to the new finger size. Adjusting the brush size while modifying the model will help keep a uniform look and cause less distortion. It takes a few times to get used to what size you'll really need, but it's nothing in depth and only takes a few tries to get the rhythm down. The reason we turn symmetry on is so that the model will be moved evenly in each direction. Okay, so that was for a size 6, let's take it back to a size 8. Using Alt-Z, we'll switch to a transparent view, and from here the steps are the same as before. Bring back up the finger size guide, drag the base of the model to the top of the finger, and then adjust the shank as needed. Alright, now let's quickly go to a size 10. Same thing once again, use the finger size guide that the ring needs to be, drag the model to the top, and then adjust the bottom half of the shank larger. And overall that's pretty much it. Always remember to save the original model and each new finger size as it's been adjusted.
So that's for one type of design, but let's say you have something a little more detailed. Here's the model of one of our butterfly rings. Again, it's the same process. Like before, this is currently a size 8 and let's take it to a size 10. Make sure the guide is on, drag it up, go to sculpt mode, and then slowly push and pull the shank into place using various size brushes. Alright, easy enough. Let's look at another example, a class ring. Here's a pretty detailed university ring we made a few years back. Again, it's the same process with class rings. The model is a size 8 and let's take it to a size 6. Pull up the guide, drag the model, switch to sculpt mode, and then push and pull the shank. The only difference with a class ring is you want to be mindful of the details along the sides. Most of the time if it's done correctly this won't cause any issues. But in the beginning, always check on and off in case something messes up. This way the changes can still be undone if needed. Finally, here we have the last type of ring that usually needs to be resized often, and it's the more traditional style wedding band. If the ring isn't an attorney style, then the previous steps all apply. However, if it is an eternity, which just means that the pattern wraps all the way around, then it's better to scale down the model along the X and the Z axis in order to keep the pattern uniform and with the same width. This will change the thickness ever so slightly depending on how far it's taken up or down, but going plus or minus two or three finger sizes won't change that much. For example, this ring is currently about 1.9 millimeters thick. And then when we scale it down along the X axis, and then the Z axis, the new thickness is about 1.8 millimeters thick. And that's pretty much it, just a quick way to resize a ring before printing. This works with just about every ring style and probably 95% of the time. There are a few exceptions, but those are more outliers rather than downfalls. Hope that helps for those who've asked and for anyone else who is curious. If you or if you have a customer who's looking to have a piece custom made, feel free to reach out to us. Or if you're looking for any 3D models, feel free to check out any of the links posted below. We're adding new items all the time. For anything else, always feel free to reach out and as always, thanks for watching.